Welcome to my channel where we cover the lore of video games. We cover all kinds from the mainstream to the indie, so I hope you enjoy your stay, and welcome to the Chronicler of Lore. Miles Morales was a normal teenager living in Brooklyn with his parents, but all of that changed when his dad died in a bombing at City Hall. Peter Parker, also known as Spider-Man, and his Aunt May helped him through that tough time while the whole Devil's Breath incident was going on in the city. And by the end of it all, Miles had gotten bit by a genetically modified spider that gave him spider powers, and of course Peter starts to train him. Now he gets to do the whole double life thing. He and his mom move to Harlem for a change of scenery, and that's where the story begins. Miles gets a text from Peter letting him know that the convoy is leaving, so he suits up to go and meet him. The cops are finally sending the prisoners that escaped from the raft back to the prison, and Peter and Miles are going to tag along since the rhino is a part of the prisoners getting transported. They're moving him in a pretty stupid way, attached to the bottom of a helicopter, and naturally the cables start to break, so Miles tries to stop it, but he's new to this whole thing and doesn't do a good job, which causes it to crash and release the rhino, who of course, completely on accident, frees a lot of the other prisoners. Peter goes to deal with the rhino while Miles captures the prisoners. Dealing with Rhino while trying to keep the extra strong armored nut job from killing people is pretty rough and it gets worse when he runs Peter through a Roxxon power plant that blows out the power of a big part of the city. Miles is thrown away from the explosion but Peter's pulled right through the middle of it and he gets knocked unconscious leaving Miles to fight the Rhino alone. That's pretty bad but Miles' mutation isn't the same as Peter's and he has a few powers that Peter doesn't. One of those is the ability to shock people with a touch and no matter how strong you are, getting tased hurts. That lets Miles put Rhino down for long enough for Peter to recover and for Simon Krieger, the leader of Roxxon, to show up with his security to detain the Rhino. Miles and Peter kinda destroyed his building but he was planning on demolishing it anyway. Miles still doesn't feel comfortable leaving the Rhino with Krieger but he says his troops can handle it and since Peter says it's fine, the two Spider-Men leave. They're both excited about Miles' new powers, and under normal circumstances, they run all types of tests to see what he can actually do. But Peter is going to be leaving town for a few weeks. Mary Jane is going overseas on a project for the Daily Bugle, and she requested that Peter takes a job as her photographer. He couldn't pass up the opportunity to spend more time with MJ, but Miles doesn't think he's ready to be the only Spider-Man in the city. Peter disagrees. Even though Miles messed up with the helicopter, he did make up for it with the Rhino. And after eight years as Spider-Man, Peter has more than a few mistakes under his own belt. Since he thinks Miles is ready, he gives him an early Christmas present and he heads off while Miles heads to meet his best friend Genki to show him what Peter gave him, which turns out to be his very own slightly high-tech spider suit that comes equipped with a radio that's automatically set to pick up J. Jonah Jameson's anti-Spider-Man podcast probably because Peter likes to torture himself. Miles swings off to test his new suit while Genki heads back to Miles' apartment and because New York, at least in the comic book world, is one of the most dangerous places in the world, Genki sees some people breaking into Roxxon Plaza on his way home. So Miles goes there because he's Spider-Man. The place is the home to one of Roxxon's biggest projects, the New Form Reactor. Once it's ready to go, the thing should be able to power all of Harlem for a fraction of the current cost, all due to a new fuel called New Form. It's eco-friendly and Roxxon plans on spreading it worldwide, which sounds good and valuable, which is why some very tech-savvy criminals are in the process of trying to steal some. This group is led by somebody called the Tinkerer and they broke in to get information on the different new form shipping routes. But after dealing with them, Roxxon security shows up so Miles doesn't have time to get more information. Plus his mom is wondering where he is, so he sneaks in his apartment in a way that will definitely get him caught one day, changes clothes and gets ready for dinner. His mom's in the middle of planning her campaign rally since she's running for public office, but she still made a nice dinner and invited one of Miles' friends over who he hadn't seen in a long time, a girl named Finn. She and Miles had been best friends before he had got accepted into a special high school, but they had lost touch which is why his mom decided to bring her over for Christmas dinner. Things have changed, obviously, but she's still big in the biotech, something she and Miles got into because of her brother Rick who works at Roxxon. But that's a bit of a touchy subject, since Real Morales is running a very anti-Roxxon campaign. But that's not the only thing that's bothering Finn, and with Miles knowing his friend, he catches it. 
Since it's Christmas, she doesn't want to talk about whatever it is that's bothering her, but they'll chat about it tomorrow when they hang out. Because Genki doesn't seem to sleep, by the time the next morning rolls around, he's designed what has to be the single dumbest thing a smart person could make, an app that lets people send direct requests for help straight to Miles. If you've been on social media for more than a few minutes, then you know that this app wouldn't make it an hour before it's full of all types of inappropriate stuff. And of course it'd take a day or two for one of Spider-Man's enemies to send him somewhere so they could just kill him. Everything does not need to be made into an app. But because stories don't work like real life, Miles gets a request for some help with the trains at Harlem Station. And it comes from a man named Aaron Davis, who just so happens to be Miles' uncle. He doesn't have a clue that Miles is Spider-Man, so this is just a coincidence. Maybe. Either way, it would look pretty bad to ignore the very first call to his new app. So Miles swings off to see what the problem is. Somebody's seemingly hacking into the train station sensors for some reason, and that's causing bad data to come through from the main relay, which could cause little issues like train crashes, derailments, and death, which is a little bit of a problem. On top of that, Aaron heard about the break-in at Roxxon Plaza by the group that Miles fought. They called themselves the Underground, and Aaron saw some of them hanging around his place when he went to work. The gang's been around for a while, but they seem to have gotten a new boss, the Tinkerer. So for now, there's no telling what they're gonna do, but it obviously won't be good. Sure enough, Miles finds members of the Underground using some very high-tech gadgets to disrupt the train sensors, which he breaks, which causes the gang members to try to kill him, unsuccessfully, of course. Aaron calls Miles through the app, another feature that would definitely be abused by everyone, to tell him that the signal's back, but there are no trains on the tracks, which means that there was more sabotage at the train yards than Miles goes to check out. As one might expect, more of the underground are there tearing stuff up, so Miles does his Spider-Man thing and takes them down in ways that are only non-lethal because the game says so, before he gets to work manually putting the trains back on the tracks since the controls are pretty busted. With it all said and done, Aaron tells Miles to swing back by so he can give him a gift to show his appreciation for his help, but on his way back the underground causes another problem. Since their more subtle sabotage failed, they just decided to go to the central hub where Aaron is and blow it up. Miles stops them with a little help from the police, and as a gift, Aaron gives him a pass for free train rides for a year, complete with his full government name on the card, because regardless of how you try to hide your face, people who know you can easily recognize your voice and the way you move. Which is why it wasn't hard for Aunt May to figure out that Peter was Spider-Man. Since watching the city is such a big responsibility, Aaron lets Miles know that if he ever needs some help, or just to talk to someone, he can call him, which he'll probably take him up on one day. With his day's work of being Spider-Man done, but not really, Miles finally gets the chance to call Finn, and she wants to meet him at the Science Center because nerd, so that's his next stop. She's waiting for him on the roof because I'm guessing New York doesn't have security on these buildings, so they can pick up the time capsule that the two of them had hid years ago with Finn's brother Rick, on the same day that he had got offered his position at Roxxon as the head of their clean energy group. The only thing they had put in the box was a replica of the energy converter that they had made that had been put on display at the Science Center, and a picture of the three of them, which makes Miles ask why the three of them had lost touch in the first place. Which makes Finn say that she's late, and she runs off in a typical way to avoid talking about something that she doesn't want to talk about. But since Miles has to get to his mom's campaign rally, he doesn't really push the issue. A lot of people show up to support Rio, including Aaron, who promises to leave before Miles' mom sees him, since his slightly shady past had him at odds with his brother, who was a cop. Her whole campaign is based on forcing Roxxon to come clean about what's in their experimental fuel that they're pushing across the city. But Miles is just worried about her safety since the last time he was at an event like that his dad died. And as expected things go bad when the Tinkerer hacks a billboard, calls out Simon Krieger as a killer, vows to keep Roxxon Plaza from opening, and starts to attack the Roxxon security guards. Genki goes to get Miles' mom out of harm's way while Miles suits up and starts punching people. Miles' mom still gets hurt but it's minor. Which is good, but the attack as a whole doesn't make sense. He thought the underground was after new form, but there's none at that location. An explosion on the Braithwaite Bridge shows that this attack was little more than a distraction for the underground's real target, a truck carrying the new form. The Tinkerer is there in the flesh to steal the stuff, but when she and Miles fight over it, her mask breaks, revealing that to the surprise of absolutely no one but Miles, it's Finn. She knocks Miles into the truck filled with the new form, and his electrical powers causes the entire thing to explode. The Tinkerer leaves with the one canister of new form that survived, while Miles is forced to save people from the collapsing bridge. Since the underground cleared out, Roxxon security turns on Miles, and they're about to shoot him, but because new powers always kick in at the perfect time, 
he turns invisible and escapes without having to beat up the security guards. The explosion on the bridge is labeled as Miles' fault despite the fact that a terrorist group started the attack. It's bothering Miles that he messed up, again, but what's bothering him more is the fact that Finn is the tinkerer and she stole the new form. Add to that the fact that even though he got powers, he still couldn't keep his mom from getting hurt and it all made for a pretty bad day. He had thought that since he'd gotten powers like Spider-Man, he'd be able to be like him and keep everyone safe, mainly because he doesn't know how many people the original Spider-Man didn't save or managed to kill on accident. But Genki points out that his problem is that he keeps trying to model himself after someone else. He's not Peter Parker. Their powers are similar, but that's about it. He has to do things his own way. So he finally takes the time to learn his new abilities, give his suit his own design, and sets out to deal with the underground in his own way. And the first thing he needs to do is figure out why Finn is going after the new form. Her family has a repair shop in Midtown where she used to do a lot of work, so he's going to go and see if he can find any clues there. The place is boarded up and dusty, but the lights are still on. And after knocking down a wall, Miles finds a not-so-abandoned secret room and a computer that has some video footage recorded from six months ago of Finn and her brother. Apparently, most of Rick's team had gotten sick working on the new form, but Krieger wouldn't stop his plans for the reactor, so they decided to break in and dump the new form and delete all of the data. Since Rick was the one who had come up with new form, if they wipe out Roxxon's stockpiles, they won't be able to make more without his work. Finn decided to record them just in case things went bad. That way, the proof would automatically upload to the Daily Bugle and maybe Roxxon could be stopped that way. There's another video showing a banged up looking Finn frustrated over the fact that none of their footage uploaded, but she promises not to let what happened be for nothing. Obviously, things went bad and her brother didn't make it out. Her video was supposed to upload from her phone, so Miles tries to track it, but for some reason he didn't think about the fact that there was likely an alarm on the place, and he's attacked by members of the underground. I just want to know how many members they actually have, because by now he's crippled or murdered at least a hundred of them. With more gang members likely paralyzed or brain dead, Miles uses Finn's computer to track her phone, which was in one of the Roxxon buildings. He hopes finding it will let him know exactly why she turned into the Tinkerer. But what he doesn't notice is someone's watching him as he heads off to the lab that Finn and her brother had broken into. If this attack was six months ago, I want to know how this phone hadn't been swept out with the trash already. But comic book stories don't always make sense. Miles sneaks into the building seemingly undetected until the Prowler, a very famous thief who Miles' dad had spent a lot of time hunting for, pops up behind him. But the man's not there to fight since he turns out to be Miles' uncle, which really explains why his parents didn't want him around the man. Miles obviously has questions, but Aaron wants him to leave since Roxxon's way more dangerous than he thinks. Aaron did a few jobs for the company, and he knows firsthand what will happen if they get caught. It involves a lot of pain and death, but Miles won't leave until he gets what he came for, so Aaron decides to help him sneak through the place. While he's crawling through the vents, Miles sees Krieger yelling at one of the scientists who still hasn't been able to make any new form, and he doesn't think he'll be able to without the batch that the Tinkerer stole, which Krieger's not happy about since the little incident on the bridge messed with his deadline. Finn's phone is in the reactor room, all of the way at the bottom underneath the thing, which would explain why nobody had taken it out of there. Even if they saw it, they'd never be able to get to it without shutting down the entire thing. Miles gets his hand on it, and using more comic book logic, he charges it with his electrical touch, one that would have definitely blown the thing up. But he sees the video of Finn and Rick trying to override the reactor. Krieger sees them, and he seals Rick inside of the reactor to kill him. Seeing that doesn't make Miles all that happy, so he decides to shut it down in the stupidest way imaginable. He absorbs the electrical energy from it. His body can't contain all of that power, so it bursts out of him destroying the phone that he came there for but he does destroy the reactor, which of course alerts the security. But with his uncle fighting beside him, they escape onto a passing subway train. Aaron warns Miles that he needs to hide until Roxxon starts going after someone else. But once Miles says that Finn is the tinkerer, he understands why the boy is so focused on this mission of his. So he gives him an idea that he should have come up with on his own. He tells him to talk to Finn and tell her that he wants to join the underground. She'll definitely let him in. Miles thinks it may be a better idea to tell her that he's Spider-Man, but Aaron says that's probably the worst idea he could have since Spider-Man has been causing her problems and she probably doesn't like him very much. Aaron had told Miles' dad who he was back when the cops were hunting for him 
But since Jefferson had a problem with the Prowler, he couldn't separate him from his brother, so he cut him off from his family because of it. So Miles decides that he's probably right to not tell Finn who he is and just follow Aaron's plan for infiltrating the underground. So he calls up Finn and goes to meet with her. Miles lets her know that he found out about her brother in a little side hustle and he wants to join her. Just like Aaron said, she brings him to her group's base in the Kingpin's old tower and tells him that she got the nickname Tinkerer since she's the one who built the underground's weapons out of programmable matter. Something that the underground had saw her working on when they had tried to rob her. They decided to make a deal. They'd help her get revenge on Krieger for what he did to her brother, and they'd get famous because for some reason, comic book criminals don't realize that anonymity is the best way to get away with crimes, not being at the top of the FBI's watch list. Whether their reasons are stupid or not, Finn needs their help to take down Roxxon. Once Miles gets inside, Finn runs off to handle some business of her own, so Miles suits up and starts hunting around for the new form. He sneaks into a room where Finn and some of her people are talking, and it turns out that Miles was a little too late because they moved the new form to another lab. It also turns out that Miles' electricity had done something to the new form, and now it's unstable in a way that makes it even more dangerous, so Finn warns her people not to touch it at all. The underground members really just want to throw the stuff out since they don't understand it, but once Finn tells them that her brother made it and Roxxon killed him behind it, they start to understand where she's coming from. Miles uses the opportunity to sneak a peek at their map to see where their other lab is. Since he's able to turn invisible, that's easy to do without getting caught. And since they think they're alone, Finn tells the people to start gathering anything that can make power, generators, car batteries, or whatever, and bring them to the theater. They all head off to get it done, and because superheroes always have to do something stupid to move things along, instead of staying invisible while he looks around, Miles thinks it's a great idea to make himself visible. Of course someone sees him, which forces him to go all punchy punchy on the attackers. Once they're dead, and I'm saying they're dead because if someone who can throw cars punches you in the face hard enough to lift you off of the ground, you are definitely dead. Likely decapitated, but definitely dead. Genki, who's always listening to what Miles is doing, figures out that the theater that Finn mentioned is called the Gym Theater. Since that's likely where the new form is, Miles heads over there. The place is swarming with underground members, which really makes me wonder just how big the group is since Miles has now put hundreds of them in the hospital. But with a little bit of searching around, he finds both the new form and a model of what Finn is doing with it. She's trying to find a way to make all of the new form as unstable as Miles had on the bridge. That way it'll explode. Then she plans on using it to destroy Roxxon Plaza. Since the place isn't open, it'll be empty aside from Roxxon's security, which she has no problem killing. Miles does have a problem with letting them die. Crippling them is fine, but he draws the line at death, so he goes to steal the new form, but more members of the underground show up to stop him. He deals with them, but Finn snatches the new form and runs. Miles chases after her, and with her tech, she manages to keep getting away. He knows that he needs to stop her, but since she's his friend, he doesn't actually want to hurt her, so he decides to tell her who he is, if he can catch her. She decides that running away isn't the easiest way to deal with the situation, so she attacks Miles, which gives him the chance to show her who he is. That was a surprise she wasn't ready for, but it does stop her from killing him. The cops interrupt them before they can talk, and she runs away before Miles can do anything else. Since that went so badly, Miles now has no clue where Finn or the new form is, so he decides to go and have a chat with his uncle who reminds him that even though he's a superhero, he's still only 17, and he needs to not get so caught up in the mission that he doesn't give himself time to unwind. That will lead him to making mistakes. After clearing his head by listening to his uncle talk about some of the things that he and Miles' dad had done, he decides to do the only thing that he can, and that's call Finn and sit down with her face to face and chat. He'll set up a meeting with her at Trinity Church, if she'll even agree to show up. She does agree to come, but she's not exactly excited about it since her friend hadn't told her that he was Spider-Man until she had nearly killed him. He does understand why she's mad, no one likes being lied to, and he understands why she's going after Roxxon, but he can't condone bombing a building in the middle of the city. Their discussion is interrupted when the Rhino, wearing a newly upgraded suit, one that's resistant to Miles' electricity, shows up and knocks both of them unconscious. They wake up tied up in one of Krieger's bunkers, face to face with the man who ruined Finn's life. He wants to add Miles to his list of test subjects because clinging to walls and tasing people with your fingers aren't normal human attributes, so finding out how this new Spider-Man came to be could really be profitable for Krieger. 
unfortunately for him. Taking off Miles' mask doesn't work since he electrocutes the man when he touches it, but he's brought them to his most secure facility, so he leaves to let his security work on the two of them. He wants Finn to tell him where his new form is, and he wants them to get Miles' mask off. They start beating on him, but they underestimate just how powerful his venom blasts are, and he lets off a charge that frees him and Finn. That's only the first step. The base is huge, and the two of them have to sneak out without ending up dead. The security is super tight, but with Finn and Miles working together, they manage to avoid death for a while, even though Miles is still arguing with her about her extreme and dangerous plan to attack Roxxon. While they're sneaking around, Miles and Finn see something that Miles hadn't expected. His uncle is there. Apparently Krieger had hired him to help track down the Tinkerer, and he had tried to keep them from attacking Miles, but since Krieger's people had caught the two of them together, he had decided to change the plan. It was obvious that the new Spider-Man and the Tinkerer were close, which made Miles a useful tool that could be used to help get information out of the girl. Aaron wants Krieger to let Miles go, and he goes as far as to threaten to release all of the information he knows about Roxxon if he doesn't, from the new form making people sick to the murder of Rick Mason, but since Aaron has worked with Krieger on a lot of jobs, and he's kind of a well-known supervillain, him going public will put both of them in prison, and Krieger doubts that the Prowler will be willing to turn himself in to take Krieger down. Miles can't believe that his uncle sold him out, which he didn't, and the conversation that Miles overheard should have proved that but Finn is really upset about the fact that she had agreed to meet Miles and ended up getting captured because he talked too much. But they can't spend more time arguing because Krieger's people have noticed that they're gone and since there's only one exit, they know where they're headed. While they're sneaking out, they find Krieger's lab and get Finn's weapons back and as luck would have it, the lab has records of all of the corners that Roxxon has cut to make their new form, the safety regulations they've ignored and the details on how the new form makes people sick. It's all information that would ruin the company if it got out, and that's why so many people, including the Rhino, are guarding it. With Rhino's upgraded suit, it takes Miles and Finn working together to put him down. Once he's disabled, Miles leaves Finn to guard him while he copies the data that would end Roxxon. There's more info in there than he thought. Apparently Krieger had amped up the power of his Roxxon Plaza reactor so it could meet his deadline, which means that if Finn causes it to explode, the blast radius will be a lot bigger than she expected. It won't just destroy the building, it'll destroy all of Harlem. While Miles is getting the info, Rhino decides that it would be a good idea to taunt Finn about her brother's death and how she had just stood there and watched him die. Obviously that pushes her over the edge and she goes to kill him. Miles tackles her out of the building because while he didn't have a problem with her killing the multiple Roxxon soldiers during the fight, he draws the line at executing a downed opponent. At that point, she's finally tired of Miles interfering, and because he hasn't accepted the fact that she's no different than any other enemy, she beats the crap out of him and leaves. He's hurt so badly that he has to call Genki to come and get him, and being the genius that Genki is, he walks Miles into his house wearing his Spider-Man suit, and of course his mom sees him. It's pretty hard to hide things now that she's seen him, so Miles tells his mom everything. She wishes he would have told her before, but she's not exactly mad. Him being Spider-Man kinda falls in line with things. Her husband was a cop who died in the line of duty, so seeing her son throwing himself at danger is uncomfortable, but it's not uncharted territory. Not to mention she's a politician who's opposing one of the most powerful companies in the world. In other words, none of her family has any self-preservation instincts. After he tells her about Finn and the bomb, she gets to work on evacuating the people while Genki does what he can to track down Finn. Ironically enough, she set up shop in the Oscorp Science Center, which Miles should have guessed since the place was important to both of them and it's closed for renovations, so it won't have a whole lot of people moving in and out. And since the place still has the energy converter that the two of them made on display, it's likely what Finn is gonna use to make the new form unstable enough to explode. Not really knowing how much time he has to stop her, Miles races toward the science center, only to get shot down and kidnapped by his uncle. Aaron knows things are about to get bad between the Tinkerer and Roxxon, so he thinks it's for the best if Miles stays out of it until the two of them kill each other. He knows it's not what Miles wants, but he'd rather have his nephew alive to be mad at him than end up dead by playing hero like his brother had. But Miles won't hide away and let people die just to save himself, even if that means going through his uncle. He's gotten the hang of his powers after all of the fights he's been in, and he beats his uncle so he can get back to his mission. The underground has the science center under heavy guard, meaning Genki was right about Finn being there, and once he gets inside he finds her and the new form. He tries to tell her that the explosion will be way bigger than she thinks, but she's done listening to him. Instead, she sends her seemingly endless numbers of underground members to fight him while she heads off to Roxxon Plaza. 
Miles deals with them and heads off after her, only to get a call from Genki saying that the evacuation of Harlem hasn't been going well since the underground and Roxxon have turned the place into a war zone. Things are way worse than Miles had expected, and the only thing that lets him have a chance at dealing with the problem is the fact that the two groups are fighting each other more than they're fighting him. He does manage to find his mom and Genki, but he can't help them escape because Finn activates her bomb. But he does get some unexpected help from his uncle who takes over the evacuation while Miles goes after Finn. He still tries to tell her that the bomb will destroy all of Harlem, but she won't listen to him, so he finally accepts the fact that he's gonna have to fight her so he stops holding back. Even when the reactor starts going crazy, she still doesn't stop. Krieger, ever taking the opportunity to be a dick, taunts the two of them over the security system, letting them know that his company will be perfectly fine even if the whole city blows up because they have this little thing that Finn forgot about called insurance. This is where the whole argument about which is better, book smarts or common sense comes in, and I have to say that common sense wins out in this situation. When Miles finally damages Finn's suit enough for her to slow down a bit, she realizes that Miles wasn't lying about her bomb destroying the city. And since that really wasn't her intention, she stops fighting. But it's a little too late for that since the reactor's too far gone to turn off by regular means. Not to mention the fact that between their fighting and the explosions, the building collapses around them. Miles saves Finn from dying, but they're both pretty hurt from the fall. With the reactor on the verge of exploding, he doesn't have time to rest. There's only one way that he can stop it from exploding, and that's to absorb all of the energy that's flowing through it. He does it, but it's a temporary solution since he can't contain that power for long. He wants Finn to get the people away, but there's not enough time for that, so Finn decides that since it's all her fault, the least she can do is carry Miles away. So when he releases all of that energy, the only person who will die is her. She carries him as high as she can into the sky before he lets off an explosion that could literally level a city. Now let's talk about this fall for a minute. Spider-Man has super strength and durability. His reflexes are enhanced, he heals fast, and falling from that high in the air would have definitely killed him just like it would have anyone else. But because the story wouldn't work if Miles had died, he survives and swings away before the cops and the press can bother him. There's a bit of an upside to all of this too. The Prowler decided to rat out Simon Krieger, which got both of them locked up, but since he worked with the cops, he's liable to get a lighter sentence. With the day saved, Peter's finally made it back, and he's happy that Miles is finally coming to his own, which is good because it's New York City, which means there's always new threats on the horizon. Only now, Peter won't have to face them solo. This concludes the story of Spider-Man Miles Morales. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, subscribe, ding that notification bell, and if you really want to show your support, you can donate to the channel through the link in the description. Until next time guys, later.